we are going to present one of the topics that are most talked about nowadays in the world, and it's neuro learning, neuro teaching. And uh, it's a quite modern concept that is becoming more and more interesting and more and more used in universities and classrooms, and is what society is demanding for. And uh, we have an expert in neuro teaching that is Francisco Mora, and he has a book, he's written a book that says that, um, that whose, which title is, you can only learn what you love, that you can only care for what you love, that you can, know, can love only when we know what we love. And uh, when we start talking about this, after this speech of Dr. Antonio Damasio, it's quite powerful. He is a very renowned a uh, doctor from many different universities, the, including the one of Iowa, and uh, what I really like from him is the way he applies neuro teaching and uh, neuro education to uh, our daily lives. I really want you to applaud Francisco Mora, and he has the floor. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here this morning with all of you. And uh, yes, indeed, I wanted to talk about and to tackle what, what, what I understand for neuroeducation. Neuroeducation is, goes beyond technology. In this context, it's quite difficult not to use technology, the tools, and uh, this is quite hard in this context. I don't think I am the best to present to you all this content and the concept from different aspects and points of view, because we are all human beings, and words are only little vessels, little ships that uh, sail in this huge ocean of emotions. But before going into that, I wanted to tell you that there is no doubt that we all share that education is one of the most important issues nowadays for society. Grant says that in the pedagogic, pedagogical books, because human is the result of education because we still have the same genes, the same brain, the same structure, mental structure from 2,000 years ago. But we are so different from Egyptians or, or early human beings. And the genetical heritage has played a major role, but it's mainly education that had made us what we are all today. And that's what we have between our hands when we want to go deeper in knowledge. Because as Grant said that human being is what education made of him, what he didn't know, and we only learned very recently, is what neuropsychology is saying us today. A few years ago, only a few years ago, Friends magazine, Science magazine said that uh, the clear desire and the increase of an education based in evident evidence has led us to a spectacular path through neuroscience. And this catch an spectacular attention in society and a debate about the power of neuroscience when it comes to change our education system. And it is like that. And today I can say so. We are hungry for, not only for in, in the field of teachers and, and, and professionals of, of education, but 
all around and all go through the society when we try to anchor in a solid way what we had until recently as uh, theoretical appreciations and philosophical appreciation and, and, and uh, concepts. But go beyond that into a deep knowledge of it is what we get through the scientific method. And here is where we want to underline the presentation, not without saying before that what was born with neuroeducation is not something coming exclusively and only from neuro neuroscience. No, we've been during a long period realizing that current culture is dying. We are going through a transitional period because all the period, all the cultures are mortal elements as the men who create them and religions also. And we have to remember that our culture is dying, but something else is going to to be born. What is waiting for us? What is the new thing that is going to happen? All the technology? Is it only technology left? No. We believe that the, the thing that is going to appear is a new culture. And it's, it's a new culture based on the brain. I am not talking to the air. I'm talking about something that, was, that is already happening, neuroscience, neuroethic, neurosociology, neuroeconomy, neuroesthetic, neuroarchitecture, and now neuroeducation. And the question is, what is neuroeducation? What is it? What do we talk about? What do we speak about when we talk about neuroeducation? It's a new perspective of the teaching process, of the learning process for the student. It means that we are having a new approach, and I repeat, always based in a methodology that is the only one to better approach this whole truth. That is always an approximation. The universal truth is is something that doesn't exist. Truth is always changing, and we need to approach to this general truth. And this comes from neurosciences, and it integrates medicine, psychology, sociology. And that's why I wanted to tell you that uh, at this point, Neuroeducation is a step-by-step -step process. You cannot go to a certain school to think and, and thinking that you will be taught and that your training will be done using this um, approach. That's why we receive so much criticism from society. We have scientists that say, that say it is not the moment is not come to implement this technique because we know a lot but we do not know how to implement this in a proper way and there is a huge abyss between preparation or neuroeducational preparation and a teacher providing this way of teaching but i have other colleagues that think in the opposite way, now is the moment, and I do think that now is the moment to start, because it's not only about learning. It is also about learning from the old structures by destroying them, and this is the path that we need to go to. We need to correct our mistakes, because it is a true that uh, we've been sold programs pretending to be neuroeducational programs, and uh, it is not true. 
we need to raise the awareness of society, teachers, professors, students with this. And uh, for example, if you could see the single question or the single exclamation of a teacher when you present him with this theory, theory and he says, oh my goodness, if I had known, if I only had known about this before. So it's rewiring, it's transforming our way of thinking. No one learning a new thing today will have the same brain tomorrow because synapses will have changed to absorb this new information, this new culture. And this is important. And I remember Cicero now. In order to really learn the best way is to try to teach it because the teacher will also learn and his brain will change. Teachers need to know about brain maturity. We've thought about the right moment to start teaching the children in teaching languages or so many other things. Five, six, seven years old, as in Finland today, if you don't have the tools to know what is all about myelinization of the brain or, you know, the really important aspects of your brain maturity, etc., it will damage the brain of the child. And uh, now we have the tools to know when is the best moment. And we need to transfer this information because I insist you cannot learn unless you love what you've been taught. You cannot learn, but if you're afforded the information with joy and pleasure, and that's lecture. That that's also the reading f process, day by day, year by year, uh, years taken before your brain is transform transformed, before you are in the midst of all this that is crucial for human beings. We have to use in a plastical way this new method. And this is amazing. And there's critical periods or windows, and we start to learn which is this critical part of development. And this led us to know what to teach, when to teach, and how to teach. Or early interventions, for example. Today we have the capacity, and we've heard about the ability, the skills to intervene without using drugs when it comes to treat serious problems as the dys less dyslexia problems or or other syndromes of attention for example i would have loved to have more time to teach you all that we know now about this. And it is related to age, to training systems, to a huge amount of factors that will allow us to transform the teaching system in, if in the future. And things that, uh, for example, the circadian circles you cannot teach a boy that is born like an early morning uh, bird. You cannot teach him late in the afternoon because he's an early bird. But a child that is uh, more comfortable during the last hours of the day, you cannot teach him early in the morning. So um, you cannot teach that person math or chemistry or physics early in the morning. I mean, yeah, teaching should be personalized, customized. And it is only possible to learn what you love, I repeat. I wish I could have another 10 minutes to explain you, to explain to you the way of thinking.
because thinking is also an emotional process. Without emotions, you cannot learn. You can only learn through happiness. You would tell me, yes, but you can also learn through pain. Yes, but it's negative. And you want to forget. Your brain doesn't tell you, but you will want to forget what you learn through pain. What we want to remember is pleasure. What we want to remember is joy. What we want to remember is what we learned through positive feelings. Because learning is an energy, is an, a neuronal activity genetically programmed. This energy that we've been talking about during this morning that will push you to do things. Without that, everything dissolves. You lose it. This gear that make you react if you're talking about sex, food, alcoholic drinks, it's the essence of what we've talked about today is surviving but also communicating without communication words are empty and if words are carrying a negative word they will be lost of course they won't remain only the substrate will remain if as mammals we only keep this communications in a positive way because we are mammals and we have this brain structure emotions and the knowledge of emotions and the meaning is the base of uh, the relationship between neuroscience and neuroeducation and only in this aspect I wanted to underline to point out that emotions contain the whole functioning of the brain in the sense that the system, the brain system that will code emotions, the limbical system or the emotional system, every single thing that we touch, see, hear, taste, smell, will go to these different areas of your brain cortex that will codify that in order to build every single second of our lives. But this construction, neuronal construction, won't have an emotional content. That would be the same for all of us. But when that, that we smell, touch, smell, or, 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 or taste, or see, comes with an emotion, it, de it becomes a unique experience for every single one of us. For, and then is when we can label it as good or bad, peaceful or positive or negative, and then we are able to store it in our memory. And that's what we are all, why we are all different and that we, why we are all unique. That's why when a human being dies, dies someone that will never be repeated. And that's crucial when we approach teaching and when we try to understand our current universe. And believe me, this is vital when creating a new teaching system, a new educational system. And this is what is important, mainly for countries that are not really caring for that. No, we shouldn't do this through laws or all kind of nonsense. We need to do this well, through the love of, for human being, through uh, the correct approach. Well. The point here is that when this information comes through the limbical system and label it as good or bad, after that limbical system, this will spread to the whole brain and to, to all the association areas of the brain where we create these ideas, the abstract thoughts that 
Platón called in, as intelligent ideas. This universal apple that he thought and, and, and said that we provo produce in our brains, these abstracts that we believe as spiritual abstracts. Nowadays, we know how uh, they are formed in our brains. These abstract thoughts has an emotional impregnation. These atoms of thinking has have already a signification, a meaning for you. That's why I say there is no thought, no human thought that wouldn't won't come warmed and wrapped by emotion because there is no reason without emotion. There is no reason to think, to communicate, or to do whatever you might think of if you don't have an emotion behind that. And this is the limbical uh, system, and it's related to the brainstem area in, the br in our brain and to another area that is the amygdala. So, in this brain, and with this consideration, are the base to everything. And I am just going to add that the outstanding point here in the context of neuroscience and neuroeducation is that today we are studying emotion, curiosity, attention, learning, consolidation of memory, awareness, knowledge, mental processes, sleep, and very complicated, complex functions, social functions, mental performance, biological rhythm, shaping of critical thinking and analytical thinking and critical and creative thinking. Not the stuff that we find on the websites that with, with arguments that are difficult to, ad to absorb, but re the real thing. The real thing is how to implement a virtual path for us with an attention process that is mainly inconscient and is paradoxical. And I think, and, and, and that's the answer to my dilemma, how to finish with the suffering of children and uh, also to end with the suffering of ill people with knowledge problems and, and neurological problems. All this and the complexity of this is that it needs to be studied during childhood and puberty and, and, and going through all the stages of life until senescencia, until the third age, until you're very, very old. Because we need to understand the brain processes all through the stages of life. That's why I underline what is for me the key to start this process. One is curiosity and the other one is attention. Because these two aspects, curios curiosity and, and, and attention, curiosity has a unique characteristic of our brain. These are very complicated processes. And we have executive processes too that we are not touching, but what is curiosity? Well, curiosity is what mammals, and we are mammals, since the beginning of our species, since the origin, we are curious animals. From, our, the, from the moment we were born, when we will peek through the uh, eye of the key to discover what the, our grandfather was doing when he was locked in that room. But this curiosity is the ingredient allowing us to learn. If I tell you that even if uh, there is only a single person here following attentively my presentation, thinking what 
How interesting is this? Imagine what could happen if uh, I had a giraffe going behind me, appearing and disappearing for the, uh, from the other side. Would that person pay attention to my speech? No, of course he wouldn't. He would look at the giraffe. And the interesting point here is to ask ourselves, why? Because that breaks with the scheme. That's interesting. That's new. That's the base of uh, the, the educational system from the kindergarten to university. Raise curiosity. And you will have attention coming along with, without any effort. Ch children will pay attention to you if you make them curious. You won't need to say, hi, John, pay attention to me. But it's useless if you're boring, if you are a boring teacher. Try them with curious approaches, and you won't have to ask them to pay attention to your lecture because curiosity is what you need as an ingredient for them to remember, to pay attention to uh, for everything. And this is a perceptual and diverse uh, uh, phenomenon. But what we want to study is the epistemic curiosity, the executive curiosity, the, ex the epistemical curiosity. I don't have time to go into details but I want to, to mention there is a study showing and proving that the, the base for this is the mesodental or mesolimbical system related to reward and pleasure will be linked with dopamine and that is the base for all this process. And uh, I want to tell you that this is the base for attention. Attention is what you need to learn explicitly. And if you're not paying attention, you will lose the opportunity to learn. But at, if you want to pay attention, it's only possible if you are delivered the information with the proper timing, way, approach it is vital if you want to teach. Then you pay attention, then you remember, and then you contextualize, and this is essential. But this is also applicable for attention. As for curiosity needs the same ingredients and attention, because we have neuronal substrates that will code, code that are totally different from the curiosity ones. When you, for example, wake up and you have an elephant in front of you and, and you don't even realize. And uh, there are so many different kinds of attention, fixed attention, reactive attention, or for example, when you, uh, well, this executive uh, attention that is the one that we require for study, this is only a list of uh, kinds of attentions that I am just mentioning because this is the frame for education. After the executive attention, we have the virtual or creative attention. This is quite important for creation. Some of you must be a, could be aware of this with the Euclides example that we could have. Um, so many different approaches about creation or innovation to start transforming the world. And then uh, I just want to mention to finish that the problem nowadays with the internet and the children going to the website without any control during five, six, seven hours per day is not addiction that we have more than 30 million addicts to the internet. But the real problem, the serious problem is that internet is not compatible with executive attention that is required for studying and learning. And with all this, we could go
to the memory and mentioning how many kinds of memories we have. I want to go to their explicit, implicit, working, chronical, emotional, and so many, many different kinds of memory, and each one of them useful for a different and complementary process. Anyhow, what I want to do now is that all this not only related to the attention or to the attentional times. We've been talking during so many minutes, I don't know, but are you all following the attention, following my presentation at this circadian time? No, of course. And some of you, as I say <laughs> to my students that are looking at me, staring even at me, but they are thinking about their own stuff and mainly <laughs> about, about their own uh, stuff. And then is the uh, mainly one of, of them that is the homeostatic depression. That's clear for me. My students might be looking at me, but they are not paying attention. But I wanted to tell you. And there is a video that uh, is open online course in a pl Harvard platform because they came to me from Washington through the beat to record this video about neuroeducation and you know that they talked about that as a lecture and you know how long was that lecture? 10 minutes long. It was a quite short lecture. Huh? You know, I said you know, they came through all the way from Washington. They mounted all this tough technological items, etc. And they said, you know, and I said, is this a lecture? And they said, yes, of course it is a lecture. But I was so sad that they said, no, now we are going to record another video about neuroculture. But yes, now they are going to deliver this to the students and uh, I will be provided with the link of this video of these two videos and uh, as soon as I have the link that which I won't have uh, yet I will deliver it to you uh, it is not about to have a great speaker where we will have 10 lectures of 50 minutes no we prefer to have 50 uh, lectures of 10 minutes. It's much better. I said, no, 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 no. You, even if I can, even if I can't speak in English, I wanted to speak English and they said no. They are all recorded in the mother tongue of the speaker because of the emotional subtract. Only when you're speaking in your mother tongue, you will have the capacity to get the attention of the person listening to you. Even if you have a very good prosody or phonetical skills, this is not your natu natural context for you to express your feelings, your ideas. And with all these ingredients that I've been mentioning, curiosity, attention, memory, these are the substructs that form the base of what we think will be the transformation of education in the world. Even more, not only as, I, as I've been saying so far, it's not only about what you teach, it's how you teach it. It's that uh, critical and analytical thinking or even creative thinking that we will only through that we will introduce values and norms that are not those from the Egyptians or the Romans or the people from the Middle Age, the vehicle to transfer all this information and all this new approach is what I just said. And uh, since I only have two or three minutes left, if you allow me, I wanted to, s to underline neuroarchitectural concept. And you would say, that's real. It's so far away from the real thing. No, it isn't. Here in this room, I had the opportunity to discuss with Maria Caso about this issue. And we realized that uh, to what point it's important 
and uh, we are relating this to these very important um, working memory of ch of children that they need to keep active until 60 years old. So this, <laughs> for example, it is, we discovered that the orientation, the geographical orientation of classrooms are important. The trees, the stones, the colors of the of the classrooms are important because we are intoxicating and uh, we are invading the uh, uh, peaks of plasticity of a child when we keep him closed in a room when at that time of the life what the children what the what a child need is to express what is a flower like how does it feel to touch the petals? How does it feel to smell a flower? These perceptions, these emotions that are vital for the child to construct these abstracts and these ideas with, without good precepts. You cannot develop good concepts. And I insist beyond everything, the interior design, light, temperature, colors, drawings, posters on the walls, there, there is a very interesting study about this, about the influence of all these early interventions and the capacity of transforming a dyslexical child, even if he has this malformation, this genetical um, dysfunction uh, in the brain, because we have the ability to transform whatever we thought so far as a, an eternal destination, as this is the genome, the human genome. No, ADN is not a sentence. ADN is not something that cannot be modified. No, we need to know the Asperger syndrome, autism, all of it, 23% of the students in a, in a school is pr are proven to have any subtle um, health, neurological health conditions. And we need to fight that. And those, those children are going to be able to understand, to learn, to, to understand through emotions, not with letters and punishment, punitions. No, I finish with this slogan, the moment is come to create a new job, a job that doesn't exist, a job that will become very necessary and is the neuro teacher, neuro educator. But this is a story for a different moment. Thank you very much. Professor, Professor Mora, aunque tengamos Professor Mora, even if our levels of glucose are high now, it is impossible not to pay attention to you because you are so emotional. You're so emotive while talking, but uh, you are so passionate about what you were sharing with us that, uh, that our curiosity was very, very developed. So this is um, the end of this morning session and we have an hour and a half to share with you the next part. We will have games, we will have contests, we will have a couple of people hugging you. I will tell you, the hug should be longer than six seconds or at least six seconds. Otherwise, they won't do anything to you. Uh, we will have a very interesting afternoon session. We will have a brain or exchange. And now I'm going to invite Malala. Malala is an animation group that is visiting us this morning. Welcome, Malala. And uh, they will uh, be with us. Good afternoon, everyone. We are here and we were here at breakfast. Uh, we were trying to recharge 
and uh, to give you some energy. We will leave you a moment to eat, but afterwards we will have a contest of brain formulas, and afterwards we will have a contest with awards and prizes to activate different different parts of the brain. I, I won't tell you much more, and uh, now let's go to our lunchtime, but come back for playing with us. Thank you very much.